Hey, hey, are you an entrepreneur who has gone to every workshop known to man, has all of the online courses, has read a ton of books, and yet you're not getting the results that you want in your business building adventures? You might suffer from shiny object syndrome. I don't think I've met an entrepreneur yet who doesn't have this issue, especially in the startup phase of building a business. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, how to stop shiny object syndrome. But first, if it is your first time here, I'm Dr. Amanda Barrientes, the founder of NFA Coaching, the host of this podcast, Max Potential Habits. This is your place to come each and every week for tips, tools, and inspirational interviews to help you optimize your habits so you can thrive in life and business. And one of the big ones that across the board people struggle with is shiny object syndrome. So here's the thing. If you wanna expand your income and your impact, and your profits, right? If you wanna have more freedom in your life and your business, you've gotta to learn to narrow your focus so you can expand your freedom. Most of us think that adding more to the plate is gonna help us get there faster, but it's actually counterintuitive, it's counterintuitive to think this, but it's actually narrowing your focus. So in another episode, I've talked about the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, where we realize that 80% of your results come from 20% of your input or your effort. And that is a really powerful way to start narrowing your focus. You go, okay, if I'm out there getting stuck in shiny object syndrome and I wanna do it all, I'm gonna dilute my potency. I'm going to have way too many things on my plate and I'm never gonna get where I wanna go. Let, let's talk real quick about what shiny object syndrome is so that you can detect if this is you or not. I think of shiny object syndrome as when you get really excited about something, you dive in, you start studying it, learning it, and you're like, yes, 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 but you don't see very quick results, so then some other shiny object comes along, something that seems really exciting, and you dive into that, and you never get results because you're constantly moving from thing to thing to thing. We gotta remember, this is a Hot Habits podcast, and remember that success leaves clues. So what's a success clue? Perseverance. I've never met a successful, a highly successful entrepreneur who didn't drop the unimportant nonsense from their life and their business in order to hyper-focus on what they wanna create. If you wanna be all in in building a six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-figure business, which is totally possible for all of us, you've gotta to learn to be focused, which means you've gotta eliminate distractions, which means that you can't be focusing on shiny objects all the time or you're never gonna lay the foundation for one thing to take fruit and to blossom and grow into what you want it to blossom and, and grow into. So I wanna talk about some of the symptoms of shiny object syndrome. So you'll notice it, FOMO, fear of missing out, is one of the reasons that we get stuck in shiny objects. So there's so much information available to us at all points in time, and it, you know we get a lot of ads, and you know like we're just, oh, we see a new book, we see a new course, we see a new podcast even, and we start diving into that, and that takes our brain in a different direction, and then we wanna start going down that road. Now, I love constant learning. Learning is my highest value, but I'm I'm always learning in a focused direction toward building my business and I know exactly where I want it to go. So I'm able to be focused on what I wanna create. And that's not to say that when I started my business, I didn't have shiny object syndrome. I definitely didn't know exactly what I was doing and I wanted to learn it all and I struggled with perfectionism and imposter syndrome and all those things that sometimes can cause shiny object syndrome. Because another thing that it's rooted in, if you have FOMO, right, your fear of missing out, you go, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, what if this goes away and then that opportunity's not there, that can cause you to, practice shiny object syndrome or be stuck in shiny object syndrome. Another thing could be fear of failure, right? So if you're afraid you're not gonna succeed in one venture, then when the next sexy thing comes along, you're like, oh, maybe that's better for me. Maybe that suits me better. But it could be really rooted in you being afraid to really dive in and commit and take action and fail. Because if you never totally commit, you can't fail. 
right? So if you keep this shiny object syndrome going, then you kind of feel better about yourself. You're like, oh, I'm always in action. I'm always moving forward. But you're not really getting where you want to go because you're not taking productive, patient action in the direction of fulfilling your goals, your vision, your dreams. So you want to watch out for those things. So FOMO, remember, also is rooted in scarcity thinking. If you think you're going to miss out on something, it means you think that there's a lack of more opportunities coming your way at all points in time which is not the case. At all points in time, there are opportunities everywhere for you to make millions in your business if you choose to do that. But it's gonna take you dropping shiny object syndrome and getting focused in the direction of your vision. Another thing that's challenging about shiny object syndrome is it's really rooted in an entrepreneur mindset and a high achiever mindset. If you like hanging with me, it's likely that you're a high achiever and that you love learning about mindset habits, ways to optimize your performance. And when you have that mentality, you tend to be a high achiever who can take on a lot. So, you know, I, people are often intrigued by how much I can take on, right? When I was a single mom in grad school, I was also started building my business while I was writing a dissertation, uh, you know, driving my kids all around, teaching classes, reading books, writing papers, building my business, going to workshops. Like I did a lot. And in that I was hyper focused still on building my business. I knew, okay, if I want to graduate with my PhD, I got to stay on task there. And if I want to build my business, I've got to add a little bit every day to continue building the foundation of a website or what all the things that I was doing to get to where I am today. And that takes focused attention. It took me knowing my why. It took me really being dedicated to coaching. It took me being dedicated to finishing grad school. I actually had to drop workshops that I was running when I started writing my dissertation because I was like, crap, if I don't focus 100% of my energy, I can't say 100 because I had kids and all those things, but if I don't focus most of my working energy on finishing my dissertation, it's never gonna get finished. And that would have been such a waste after so many years of grad school and doing this incredible research with incarcerated and men and you know I really wanted to finish writing my dissertation so that I could get my PhD and move into coaching so I had to make the tough decision to let go of all the shiny objects that were coming at me and I, that I really wanted to be involved when in with coaching so that's an example of you've got to start to really fine-tune and know your why for me I knew that the ultimate why was I want to have a successful coaching business but my PhD was on the way not in the way so I needed to finish it and then and then that would be eliminated so that then I could focus all my energy on coaching. So um, remember, if you're a high achiever, you still need to narrow your focus. Don't take too much on. So I want to give you some tips about ways to take action steps if you are stuck in shiny object syndrome. And I'd be surprised if it doesn't plague you at some point in your entrepreneur adventures or in your life somewhere. And it's going to dilute your potency, keep you completely stuck and not reaching your goals, which is not what we want, right? We wanna be able to set a goal and achieve it. We wanna be able to manifest what we want in our life and business. And I want you to remember, it's not gonna happen overnight. You've gotta stay in the persevering mode where you take patient, productive action. You commit, you decide you commit and you take action in the direction of your dreams. It's almost like you have to put on blinders for a certain period of years and hyper focus on the things that are moving the needle forward in, in relationship to the vision that you wanna create. So here's the action step. So number one, I want you first to reconnect with your why. Why did you start the business you're currently working on? Okay, get really clear there. Number two, write down your top three one-year goals from today. Write down the next, if, if a year from now, what are your top three goals in your business? Number three, now ask yourself, if I were to focus and take action on the top two needle movers in my business, remember, think about the 80-20 rule, for one year straight, could I reach my top three goals? So if I were to focus and take action on the top two needle movers in my business for one year straight, could I reach my top three goals? I'm sure you could, so I want you to decide, commit, and take action. That's number four. And number five, when you notice yourself getting distracted by the next shiny object, ask yourself, what's the cost of getting distracted with this right now? Really think about the cost. Is this really gonna help you move forward? Are you just procrastinating? Are you in FOMO? Are you overdoing it? Are you stuck, uh, afraid to fail, that, and you think like you need to take something else on? Or is it that you need to 
refocus your energies and then what's the reward if I stay focused so in number five ask notice yourself getting distracted so first this takes conscious awareness and you notice oh crap I'm getting distracted now ask yourself what uh, is uh, uh, the cost of getting distracted right now and alternatively what's the reward if I stay focused you've got this I will be here next week. Rewind that if you need to. I will be here next week, as always, bringing you tips and tools to help you optimize. I hope that you have a max potential week where you thrive, you feel alive, because you learn to drop the problem of shiny object syndrome and you get hyper-focused on your freedom by narrowing your focus and getting super directed in the direction of your vision. I promise you, if you do this for a year, two years, three years, you can build an empire. It starts with the foundation of you being focused and dropping the problem of shiny object syndrome. High fives, you got this, I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Max Potential Habits Podcast. If you're liking what you've heard, it would be so incredibly awesome if you would subscribe to the channel and leave a five-star rating and a written review. This helps me help more people while we grow our NFA community so we can rock it out together. For Max Potential Habits resources, go to nfacoaching.com where you can access all of my resources. There's free ebooks, PDF checklists, a journal template, a business mindset meditation kit, and so much more. Plus, links to NFA Coaching on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And if you're super serious about up-leveling, there's also a link to schedule a free consult to work with me in group or one-on-one -on -one coaching. Until next time, I hope you have a Max Potential Habits Day where you get inspired to do whatever it takes to transform into the most empowered version of yourself so you can lead a rich, thriving, kick-ass life and business.